Chase, a once competitive runner, has been struggling with chronic hip injuries for years, and now it seems he has reached a tipping point. Hip replacements have become a major problem in the world. Each year, there are over 1 million replacement surgeries performed worldwide. The need for a hip replacement may be caused by rheumatoid arthritis, osteonecrosis, serious injury, or bone, bone tumors. Over the years, there has been much debate over what material is best for hip replacements. Some concerns are that the material could cause carcinogens to be released into the blood or cause toxic effects on the body. It is also important that the material has structural properties that are able to withstand the normal stress of bone and able to resist wear within the body. This debate is relevant to our lives because as we grow older, the threat of hip replacement will increase. We may also have to help someone close to us go through such a procedure. Finding the best material for hip replacements could greatly improve the quality of life for a large number of people. Give it to me straight, Doc. Well, I got some good news and some bad news. The bad news is that you're going to need a hip replacement. The good news is that we have some good options available for you. Oh no, I knew this was coming someday, but I didn't think it'd be so soon. Don't worry, once you have the options, I think you'll feel a lot better. Okay, Before we go through the options, let's look at the basic mechanics of a hip replacement. The traditional hip replacement consists of two components, the femoral component and the acetabular component. The femoral component is made up of the femoral stem and femoral head. The femoral stem is inserted into the femoral bone of the patient. Then the acetabular component is placed where the hip socket used to be. The femoral head fits into the acetabular component and this mimics the traditional ball and socket joint of the hip. Chase has a multitude of options available to him, including a metal on metal, metal on plastic, and plastic on plastic hip replacement. When considering what material is best, its mechanical properties and effects on the body need to be taken into consideration. Specifically, the strength of the material in comparison to the bone must be considered along with its likeliness to wear and release harmful chemicals into the bloodstream. With the metal on metal replacement, some of the most common metals used are steel, titanium, and chromium cobalt. These materials all provide the necessary strength to withstand the stress of the body. However, they come with the risk of releasing harmful metal ions into the bloodstream. Polymers serve as the basis for plastic on plastic replacements. With this material, the replacement joint may suffer from fatigue and eventual weakening of the material. The metal on plastic hip replacement consists of a socket made from polymers and the femoral component made from steel, titanium, or chromium cobalt. I think I'm starting to understand a little bit. Can you tell me more about the metal on metal option? I think I'm leaning towards that. I agree. I think the metal on metal option is probably the best. From my experiences, may I suggest chromium cobalt because of the least amount of difficulties. Awesome, yeah. Can we talk about the details so that I know what I'm getting into? When considering what material is best for hip replacements, we must look at its mechanical properties, its structure, and how it's processed. These three things combined are what make a material unique and help determine if it is best suited for your need. Let's begin by examining the basic properties of chromium cobalt. The chemical makeup of the typical chromium cobalt material is cobalt-28, chromium-6, molybdenum. This is a particular cobalt chromium alloy that has been found to be suitable to traditional body conditions. In weight percents, cobalt accounts for 66% of the material, chromium accounts for 28%, and molybdenum accounts for 6%. Chromium is an important component of this alloy because it provides solution strengthening and is of vital importance in precipitation strengthening. Similarly, the addition of molybdenum provides additional so solid solution strengthening. Therefore, these elements in combination make for a stronger structure of the alloy. It has a density of 8.5 grams per centimeter squared. Its Young's modulus is about 210 gigapascals. This describes the stiffness of the material. Since chromium cobalt has a Young's modulus of 210 gigapascals, that means that a large amount of stress can be applied to the material before deformation occurs. Chromium cobalt also has a yield strength of about 500 megapascals. The yield strength is the point at which a material permanently deforms. Having a high yield strength means that it takes a lot of stress for a material to permanently deform. It is recommended that materials for hip replacements have a yield strength of at least 500 megapascals to withstand the natural stresses of the body. Under this condition, chromium cobalt is suited for body stress. Also, the suggested tensile strength for a hip replacement material is at least 650 megapascals. Chromium cobalt has a tensile strength of about 770 megapascals, which exceeds the suggested value. The tensile strength describes the point at which a material breaks. The higher the tensile strength, the less of a chance that the material will completely break. So, having a high tensile strength is beneficial for replacement materials. The corrosion rate for chromium cobalt is between 0.003 and 0.009 mils per year. This means that in one year, it will corrode between 3 millionths and 9 millionths of an inch. These numbers are based on the placement of the material in the body. They are based upon the corrosion rate of the material while being used as a hip replacement in the human body. 
this corrosion rate is well below the maximum accepted rate of 0.01 mils per year. Such a small corrosion rate is a beneficial property because it means that less metal ions will be released into the bloodstream, and therefore, there will be a reduced risk of toxic and carcinogenic effects caused by the replacement. Also, with less corrosion, the replacement will last longer and be more stable for a longer period of time. For a long time, low corrosion rates in stainless steel made it the optimal material for replacements. However, due to its content of nickel, which can cause allergic reactions, it is not very biocompatible. For this reason, it is typically only used for temporary replacements and chromium cobalt replacements have been substituted for long-term replacements. Corrosion resistance and fatigue of the material is very high because new production methods result in very fine-grained alloy compositions. It also has no allergenic and good elastic properties. Let's look at how chromium cobalt is processed. By examining how it's processed, we will be able to completely understand its properties and microstructure. The basic procedure that is used when making the chromium cobalt alloy is casting. The initial mixture of chromium cobalt is a liquid solution with about 28% chromium and about 72% cobalt. This liquid solution, which is in the region above the FCC phase, is then cooled down into the FCC region of the chromium cobalt phase diagram. It is once the material is in this region that precipitation and solution strengthening is performed on the material. The FCC region is the region in which the material is worked with in order to produce the hip replacements. This region can be seen on the phase diagram in the highlighted pink region within the FCC section. Once the chromium cobalt alloy is cooled into the FCC region, precipitation and solution strengthening are performed on the material. The precipitation strengthening introduces carbide precipitates to the original FCC lattice structure. While this strengthening makes the material stronger, the carbides and added hardness increase the possibility for fracture in the material, which is not ideal for a replacement. Therefore, the following heat treatment is utilized to eliminate some of the carbide precipitations to reduce the hardness and increase the ductility of the material. Heat treatment that consists of heating to high temperatures and then rapid quenching helps to dissolve the carbide impurities. This process helps make the microstructure more isotropic and less brittle. It also results in fully dense portions of the material without weld lines that cause weakness in the material. The removal of carbides also leads to increased ductility and reduced hardness. This allows for more mobility of the joint. Finally, the replacement will be attached to the bone via either cemented or cementless fixation. The first method is cemented, which is when fast drying bone glue is used. Bone cement is typically made up of liquid and powder. The powder consists of bead-shaped particles that are homopolymer PMMA. When the liquid and powder are mixed, polymerization occurs. Polymerization of bone glue is an exothermic reaction typically, and it takes 10 minutes to fully polymerize and therefore solidify the bone glue. While this method guarantees that the replacement is attached during surgery, a major disadvantage of this method is that glue can wear down over time. The second method is cementless fixation, which is when the surface of the implant is processed to be porous. The surface has a honeycomb-like texture. This allows the bone tissue to naturally grow into the implant over time. Although the replacement is not initially set, this method is often considered superior due to the bone's more natural attachment to the replacement. However, in older people, when bone strength is compromised, the first method is typically adopted. In Chase's case, the doctor will use cementless fixation. Since he is young, his bone is still strong and will be able to grow into the honeycomb structure of the replacement, leading to a much sturdier hip. Alright, doctor, I think I've heard enough to convince me. The chromium cobalt hip replacement sounds like the best option. Alright, let's make an appointment sometime next week, we should be all set. Great. Wow, look at this. I feel like a brand new man. I'm gonna go run a marathon now. Thanks, Doc. Hold on, there are some limitations to this. Over time, metal fragments may appear in the bloodstream. This could cause toxic effects, especially in allergic, allergic reactions to it. That doesn't sound too good. Don't worry, metal allergies are relatively low, and the chromium cobalt has a high resistance to corrosion. You can check back with me every now and then, you should be all set. Great. It was great working with you, Doc. No problem.